All right, welcome to Do or Don't See, the only podcast where you can hear all latest in television and entertainment news. Too many else with exactly the same opinions. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is John Burrow. The third one is Kyle Bridger. I will say, and I'm just gonna be say that I am the Saw franchise because I want to make you saw off your arm when I record this thing. John, I'm going to be nice to you, and I'm going to give you the Resident Evil franchise, because I feel like right. gamer. And mm-hmm. then Dave is the Sharknado franchise. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll take it. Sharknado. All right. Uh, three franchises. Uh, not, not, well, I guess one made the bracket. Didn't make it out of the first round. But yeah, tonight we're talking film franchises. We got our big bracket. March is over, so we got to settle up the bracket and reveal the winner of the film franchise bracket we did this March. Uh, Before we get to that, though, we have this first segment to talk about some news and stuff going on in the industry. And John, just help me out. Um, What's it called again? In and Out Points. In and Out Points. Yes, yes, it is. It is in and out points. Let's see here. Our first one involves something we're going to be talking about next week on the podcast, the 93rd Oscars. Uh, There's one film at the Academy Awards that only got two nominations this year, and many thought it could have picked up more, especially in a slower year, and that film was Tenet. Now, IndieWire wrote up a piece asking why the Christopher Nolan $200 million blockbuster was not supported by Warner Brothers in an awards campaign. They answered their own question, Christopher Nolan. Um, this, this article goes in depth of why Warner Brothers may have taken their money out of Tenet and put it into other films like Judas and the Black Messiah. But according to sources, and what we kind of correctly guessed uh, over the summer, the studio tried to calculate the ideal theatrical release timing that would yield the most return on its investment for Nolan in the film. But Christopher Nolan had a different idea. He wanted to save theaters. He wanted to bring them back from the dead. Well, it was released, not not the greatest domestically. And then in November, Nolan told Warner Brothers to put money on extending the film's release instead of the Oscar campaign. So they did that. (laughs) So they just did that. What do you think about this kind of extra development, Kyle, that the the money that may have been used for this awards campaign for the film was instead, at Nolan's request, supposedly put into the film being in theaters a little bit longer? I mean, I think his thought process would be hopefully that extra money put towards the extended release is going to make more money for him in the long run, make more money for the people that are working on the project, hopefully, and the producers. And obviously, the more money you make on a project, the more that future projects you're going to get uh, because of that, because of the the money it makes. So to me, it makes sense um, for him to do this, but it was a, a problem of his own creation in the first place. So that's that's what the real the real issue was here. Um, and so I think that probably botched everything maybe if you push it back and now you're in a different window maybe it's picking up steam instead of you know it's kind of forgotten about right now so uh it is a again i understand the idea is a good idea um but again it's a problem of his own creation and i don't feel bad at all yeah there's so many things to the story because like for him obviously okay you want to save theaters but we talked about it by sometimes opening up the theaters when there was nothing to play and a a limited amount of people that wanted to go it actually hurt the theaters because it cost them a lot to open up and operate but then he also makes money off of the film in the back end so wouldn't you want to maybe wait on this film for the biggest possible release which means more money in your pocket Mm -hmm. uh and then also oscars it's like well to be able to say it especially in a year like this, I have a best picture nominee. I have the best picture possible winner. Mm. Uh, If if, I mean, there was a lot of promotion for this film because every week it was delayed, delayed, delayed. Oh, it's opening theaters. Oh, it's saving Mm. theaters. 
there was you couldn't have bought this publicity the film got, but still only managed to get two nominations. Do you think, uh, John, if if Warner Brothers spent more money, do you think Tenet could have gotten more nominations? Mm, I don't think so. I, I think that um, he made a bad call. Nolan made a bad call. It's a Personally, I think he made a bad call as to when it's, it went out, and I think he doubled down on doubled down on it, and he it didn't pay off even even mm-hmm. at double down. So yeah, I, I think I think if they had kind of delayed it, or or I know we've previously talked about um, uh, at home distribution, if that had been a factor, um, I think that could have really made it be more successful. But he seemed pretty pretty obstinate about about pursuing anything other than theaters. Yeah, and I wonder what it would have done if it did something like I mean Godzilla versus Kong. Had a great opening weekend. Again, the pandemic has, you know, for the most part, gotten better. And there's been more people vaccinated and and more theaters opened up. So that is different from when Tenet came out. But it's doing well at theaters and at home. Could they have done something with that for Tenet? Or done something that they did for, like, Mulan or what they're going to do for Black Widow? Where it's like, okay, uh, it's going to be in some theaters. But it's also going to be at your home for 30 bucks a pop opening weekend. Could that have helped for Tenet? I, there's many different ways to it. In the end, it probably didn't help, uh, you know, Warner Brothers to want to put any money into the awards campaign. When in December, we talked about Nolan called out HBO Max and said it was the worst streaming service and that he was, quote, relieved it wasn't launching on HBO Max like the other 2021 releases that are going into theaters and on the streamer at the same time. Mm. But, yeah. So, yeah. I mean... There's no love from HBO to go out of their way to help you when you start crapping mm. on the the product that they offer. I mean, and I will say, I think HBO Max is the best uh, streaming service right now yeah. that's, that you could possibly have. Um, mm. But uh, going back to the award situation with this movie, I, I mean, uh, I don't even know. Like, in the, you would say a movie like this with the technical categories, but like that we talk about the sound always. It always seems <laughs> off to me. So I don't know. I don't know with that, but the, I th- hmm. I don't think the storyline is worth it. Uh, maybe some cinematic elements to it, but I don't think it's worth a screenplay not or anything like that. So even still, I don't think this is a an awards worthy movie, even in a kind of an off year. I don't know if this is one is gonna jump jump into the echelon, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because off the top of my head, the the films that definitely broke in at the Oscars were. Uh, Inception definitely was nominated for Best Picture, and I think probably Screenplay. Um, and then I believe Dunkirk, Dunkirk yeah. was a was a p- Best Picture and probably Best Director yeah. nomination. I can't remember about Interstellar, and maybe Memento made it in for Screenplay. I'm not completely sure, but you know his films can get in there as you know even if they are sci-fi mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, it is a smaller year. You would thought it would have gotten those kind of cinematic nominations. It got two. It got one in production design which was kind of an odd one and uh visual effects um and it's interesting because the visual effects nomination may have come from the crafts people themselves submitting a sizzle reel for considerations they kind of banded together to release a sizzle reel Mm -hmm. for this because as i said warner brothers did not mail screeners to the academy they did not plunk down twelve thousand five hundred dollars to upload the film on the academy portal there was no fyc ads billboards stuff like that all that money was put into the film being in theaters. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, music's in the chat. By the way, I saw Godzilla vs Kong, first new movie I've seen in like five years. The HBO model's working. Yeah, we're getting music's watching Godzilla vs Kong. I'm curious to see the word of mouth on that movie, as mm-hmm. opposed to like I don't know. Just were you gonna plan on watching it before, or did you just want to be part of the I, the zeitgeist? I wanted to be a part of the conversation and. That's kind of the thing where it's great, where it's like it's launching streaming service. Everyone's able to see it that weekend. Mm. And there was that pop and the buzz and Mark was getting us excited. Yeah. And it worked on me that that buzz. I don't know I, I checked it out opening weekend <laughs> uh, from your couch. <laughs> opening from my couch. Weekend. I love how you said it. Like, you're, there. You're, like you went out. You're like, I checked it out opening weekend. I, I made I made dinner. <laughs> I got, you know, that was less than the uh, cost for uh concessions at the movie yep. theater it was no parking i had to worry about it was great it was great <laughs> all right enough of that let's move into another director that has a lot of opinions martin scorsese um in march there was a harper magazine essay that scorsese 
discusses Fellini's filmography, and he uses the Italian filmmaking icon to argue why the magic of cinema is now being lost among the onslaught of content being released by film studios and streaming companies. What's interesting by this is he did have to acknowledge that the streamers have helped his career. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Netflix, The Irishman, and his upcoming uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, which is going to be on Apple. Mm-hmm. So, but but he says uh, the art of cinema is being systematically devalued, sidelined, demeaned, and reduced to its lowest common denominator by films, you know, called content. Content. So that's the word he kept coming back to. And uh, I'll read this full quote, and then I'll get your guys' opinion on it. It's a long one, but as recently as 15 years ago, the term content was heard only when people were discussing the cinema on a serious level. It was contrasted with and measured against form. Then gradually it was used more and more by the people who took over media companies, most of whom knew nothing about the history of the art form or even cared enough to think that they should. Content became a business term for all moving images. A a David Lean movie, a cat video, a Super Bowl commercial, a superhero sequel, a series episode. It was linked, of course, not to the theatrical experience, but to home viewing on the streaming platforms that have come to overtake the movie-going experience, just as Amazon overtook physical stores. If further viewing is suggested by algorithms based on what you've already seen, and the suggestions are based only on subject matter or genre, then what does that do to the art of cinema? <clears throat> Next, see with what you want to see. I mean, <laughs> yeah. but also that last little line doesn't make sense with the rest of the thing. How does um, you know watching whatever The Godfather or Honey Boo Boo? How, why does the algorithm the them offering me something next change filmmaking? Because I could watch The Godfather and be like, Hey, do you want to watch? You know, Casino or another great film that yeah. so I d- that doesn't make any sense to me. That last line doesn't. But if whatever. anything, yeah, yeah, it possibly brings it, forward things that are are less prevalent that are our masterpieces, yeah. kind of hidden gems. Yeah, the algorithm could be like, hey, you're really on this kick with a name director here. Mm. Do you know he also worked on this film, mm. or he was inspired by this director? And it's like, I mean, it depends on who's running the algorithm. If the algorithm is Netflix. And they're going to point you to their Netflix original movie, uh, The Wrong Missy, yeah. after you watched whatever, you mm-hmm. know, classic film you did. Well, maybe that's that's a bad algorithm. Mm-hmm. But if the algorithm is run by the, you know, the Peabody Award winning whatever group, it's like, oh, oh, oh this is high class cinema. So, okay yeah, here. but and, here's the thing going back to, like Scorsese, I guess you could say that there's less... Uh, small movies being made but isn't that the whole indie circuit isn't that these you know these film festivals where these small films get bought and then you have the next uh oscar nominee like that's the oscars in a nutshell it's all these tiny films at these film festivals that are kind of branching in and i would think he would consider those artistic right and i don't think we're losing anything in the film integrity or people that work in the business it all the other stuff is superfluous it's extra but that's not threatening movies anyways it never was you know what i'm saying it just seems like he's mad about things being made (laughs) yeah content yeah it's a cat like a cat video in a super bowl commercial is not going to be held to the same standard as your three-hour irishman film it's just not like and I could see maybe what he was saying where it's like, oh, there's there's definitely a line being blurred between miniseries and and film where it's like, oh, this is a 10 part movie. And it's just, you know, the Queen's Gambit. It's, you know, OK, it's just a longer movie or, if, you know, I could see that that line is being blurred. But with this, it's like there's no distinction between these two different, completely polar opposite things. Mm. But yeah. yeah, I mean, unless he wants to get angry about maybe people. Uh, if they're consuming all this p- crap content and they like it, why? What's gonna make them like this artistic film that they have to sit three and a half hours through, like The Irishman or whatever? I, I mean, unless he's saying on that end, um, but I still think that people can enjoy reality TV and be artistic too yeah. and think in in different realms. So 
it just sounds like he's mad at the world changing and this might be like old man territory because as far as I'm concerned, you know, films are, those artistic films, those indie films are still being made with high quality. Yeah. On, yeah. on top of all that, sorry, Dave, uh, look no. at the way film has, has changed in, in, in the last couple of years. I mean, think of, think of how, how it used to be done on, on reels and, you know, uh, uh, black and white and, and at what, like 10 frames per second or whatever, whatever, you know, and then, and then we get more steady frame rates and we get color and we get sound and then we go digital. Uh, how is this anything besides the progression of media? I mean, uh, uh, all that, I mean, you could look back and say, yeah, I kind of liked, you know, 24 frames on film better than, you know, HD digital, but that doesn't mean that HD digital is, is bad and worthless. It's just a different way of doing it. I, I don't see any reason why people can't continue to make the three hour, you know, Irishman, and then have your your CGI cat singing, you know, meow mix on on the internet. What's what, what's the difference? You know, it, it, they're both two different halves of the same, you know, the same thing. The ironic part yeah. is, it's that in the Irishman, he was using like some brand new technology yeah. to change the faces. So I mean, that's breaking <laughs> cinematic For integrity. Streaming service, you yeah. know, it's just so yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. At the end of the day, more stuff is being made in. And- more stories are being told by people that may have not had the chance to tell their story. They've, they've, to be able to make a film on my phone and upload it and get it sent to a festival or being seen by some powerful agent or whatever it is, more people are being able to tell their story and get their stuff out there for people to see. That's great. Do we really need the same 10 old white guys telling us the stories for the next 60 years? No. We need new voices. And, yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. All right. Um, one last in and out point tonight, and it involves this is what I would call a classic film. I am surprised Scorsese did not mention it in his list of content. Mrs. Doubtfire. Woo! A classic film. There was a tweet that went viral from the unverified at Facts on Film Twitter account, and it said, while filming Mrs. Doubtfire, Robin Williams improvised so much that there was a PG. PG-13, R, an NC-17 cut of the film. What? <laughs> NC-17? Yeah. He had to have pulled something out of somewhere to do that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, I... There, NC-17 is, like, reserved for the, like, most graphic content, the most graphic, like, sex, because, okay, I feel like, you know, with an R-rated film, you say the F word twice, it's it's R. It's just, it's R, like, no matter yeah. what. But NC-17, man, <laughs> what was going on in that film? Didn't, I, oh I thought there God. was, like, a clarification in the tweet that said, maybe not NC-17, but there was, like, something, there was definitely a rated R version, uh, like the director yeah. or something so, said. So the director, Chris Columbus, did actually confirm to Entertainment Weekly that while there is an R-rated cut, it, there's no NC-17. Yeah, cut. I'm like, that's <laughs> insane. I mean, what in what world did he think this was making the cut if if he's, maybe, you know... Maybe the content was there to do it. They just didn't assemble it. Maybe. That's true. Yeah, I guess. Maybe. I just, again, like, you could say whatever you want almost for an R-rated film. We've seen that in all the Seth Rogen, Judd Apatow yeah. movies. You could say whatever you want. It's R-rated. NC-17, you have to do some graphic stuff to bump it up to that, like... Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, the director said, quote, he would sometimes go into territory that wouldn't be appropriate for a PG-13 movie, but certainly appropriate and hilariously funny for an R-rated film. I would be open to maybe doing a documentary about the making of the film and enabling people to see certain scenes re-edited in an R-rated version. That would be that interesting. Would be, that'd uh, so, be great. Yeah. Yeah. Release the Doubtfire <laughs> cut. <laughs> Coming the four hour version to HBO Max. Can't wait. Yeah, I just, I, I it definitely has to be some improv from Ron Williams. Cause if that's being said, I'm sure there, that means there's an R rated cut of Aladdin out there. <laughs> you know? Well, he did say, I will show you the world. So, whoa. Okay. Uh, yeah, there, I don't know if you, you've seen that video, right, Kyle? The viral, a whole nude world. I have not. I don't think so. All right, you got something to look up uh, after the podcast on YouTube. Okay. There you go. That's my recommendation of the week. Oh, nude world. But, all right, all right. 
I think that's it. I think that's it for In and Out Points tonight. We have to get into the meat and potatoes of tonight's podcast. Uh, we're talking March Madness. To get you in the spirit of March Madness, we got a sound clip. John? Right, whose dream is coming true tonight to be named <laughs> <Adore> Dun- your <laughs> favorite film franchise bracket? <laughs> oh my god! All right, it's a yearly tradition we to do a bracket that's some somehow pop culture related. Uh, two years ago, for instance, we did a a Oscar Best Picture. Like, what was the best picture year at the Oscars? All the nominees. What was the best year? Last year we did TV. What was your favorite TV character currently on TV? So this year we're going back to film and we're doing film franchise and I'm going to set it up, talk about what didn't make the cut and then we're going to go round by round talking about some of the matchups and then reveal the big winner live on the stream tonight. But we defined franchise as a series of four or more films that either share the same fictional universe or is marketed as a series. So no trilogies here. You gotta have four or more. Some franchises seemingly cover multiple films. You got the MCU, Marvel, and you also have Spider-Man here. Well, you know, they're they're different studios are legally involved. It's it's the Disney studio, and you have Sony doing the Spider-Man movies, and they sometimes have the characters crossover, but they're different things. The DC universe. And the Batman universe are sometimes considered separate. So we looked at sites like Box Office Mojo, Business Insider, Rotten Tomatoes, and that's how they listed them separately. So we said, okay, we're going to agree with those outlets. And then finally, seating. Seating was decided based on the total North American box office. And these totals came from Box Office Mojo, which means the MCU, number one, number one seed, 8.5 8.5 billion was the total for all those films, followed by Star Wars with 5 billion, and then our 32nd franchise was American Pie Woo! with with 409 million over four theatrical films. Every round started on Monday, it closed on Sunday, and between our listeners and some movie fans from the movie and sample size subreddits, every round got at least 50 votes. Most of the times it was more, so pretty good sample size to figure out the film franchise bracket. All right, let's talk about what missed the cut. Was there anything you guys thought missed the cut on these? We have 32 films here, film franchises. Um, Because I have some from listeners here. Okay. I'll start off. Mike Ledoux said, Where is Scream conjuring my ass? (laughs) (laughs) Scream, the Scream franchise. There's four films in that franchise. I believe they're working on a fifth now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do like Scream. I, I I wanted to put it on the list, but it was like, when I looked at the box office, it was actually a bit farther on the list, and I looked at where it was. It was under American Pie, for instance, with box oh. office. But then it was under some other horror franchises. It was under Jaws, Paranormal Activity, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. It was below them. It was nearly tied with The Exorcist, box office-wise. Do you think it was okay I left Scream off on the list yeah, here? Yeah, I think Scream is considered a cult classic. So, yes, it's in Mike uh, Mike Ledoux's realm of the world. But uh, I know the, yeah, the I, fans really do love that movie. And I enjoy yeah. I enjoy it. Um, it's campy. It's fun. But I think uh, for it's definitely a love-hate with that, with that movie or with that. Yeah, I think the first one, many people are like, this is a great movie. This is great. The, the sequels are hit or yeah. miss, especially that third one. And then the fourth one, there's some fans, there's some detractors. So I feel like that's how a lot of it was with the franchise. Uh, it's like, all right, you have one film and the other ones are uh, yeah. getting you off the list. Uh, you got to have you got to have a well-rounded team. You can't just have one knockout film um, before I reveal some other left off uh, films. Any any do you guys have any? That you think should be on this list? Uh, hmm. I'm looking at the box office mojo thing just to get a sense of kind of tough. I mean, like, yeah, I, my my first thought goes to 
like well i guess that's only three all right yeah yeah it's it's tough. a lot of them are like it's, tough. it's just like oh yeah it's only three and at first i was going to do trilogies mm-hmm. for this but then it's like a lot of nowadays a lot of these classic trilogies they're either making a fourth or there is a fourth i mean yeah. the matrix soon is going to yeah. have a fourth toy story just released a fourth um all these ones that had three men in black they just made a fourth like it's mm-hmm. just so that's why we moved up to four here so i uh Zima i was just oh, okay Go looking ahead. at one uh the terminator french terminator yeah that, that could have made the list i didn't they have like not spinoffs but like I thought there was more than more than four. Oh, oh yeah, I guess there would be more than yeah. Okay. There's yeah, seven. Franchise. Yeah, yeah. There's All right. seven. Oh, actually, Terminator did make our list. It did? Actually, Where? yeah, twenty five seed. It it got it lost to James Bond. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I thought I thought it wasn't. Yeah. On, I double checked too. I can't to remember. Yeah. That's okay. Um, let's see. Z Milan had he also said Scream, but he also questioned Alien, Despicable Me, and. For me, Despicable Me. It's like okay, well, I picked Shrek and Toy Story for anime. We don't need a whole animated. That's not our demo. <laughs> <laughs> Shrek and Toy Story, I feel like they cross over. I don't know how many people in our demo are watching Despicable Me franchise, mm, but okay. Yeah. You can. But Alien, are you guys fans of Alien? I haven't seen, haven't seen them, yeah. No. I know one is yeah, considered like one of the best yeah. movies, but we, uh, I might have seen a few scenes, but not whole yeah, entire movie. Seen scenes from it. I mean, that's that's the classic one with the... With the the face, with the little face that yeah, comes out, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like I feel like again, first one classic, but then it's like okay, are the other ones really yeah. that good? And I had like the highest grossing of the bunch is this Prometheus one, which I've heard is hit or miss, and that was only 126 million at the box office. Wow. So you know, I don't know. Yeah, a lot of commenters were actually mad about the alien snub, but better luck next year, guys. Okay. Um. All right, let's jump into this here. Let's we're gonna go round by round. We'll talk about some of the ones, you know, the blowouts, the surprises, stuff like yeah. that. Um, say, round one finished up. We got from 32 franchises down to 16. And the huge blowout, Star Wars, 95% to Sauce, 5%. Uh, number two seed versus a 31 mm-hmm. seed. Any, any surprises there with Saw losing? No. Um, Saw, you want to talk about a franchise with one good movie and then... Yeah. <laughs> ugh. It's amazing how many movies can get made off of one good solid movie, and that is. Uh, They're doing a new one, like a, a rebooting the franchise with Spiral. It's uh with uh Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson. It's like from the world from the Book of Saw, I believe they're marketing it as. Interesting. It's coming out this summer, so. Um, um. Yeah, I don't think horror horror really did all that well in the um. The looking of here. I mean, even like the Conjuring Lost, uh, the DC Extended Universe. Well, I just um, think with horror, it's a very niche thing. Like people are yeah. really either into it or people are not into it at all. I just feel like that's how it is when it yeah. comes to that genre. Yeah. H- Halloween Lost, the Spider-Man. Yeah. I, I don't think any horror even made it out of the first round. But um, let's see. Uh, one that wasn't a surprise. Uh, the MCU beat American Pie. The thing that was surprising, though, American Pie did get 6% of the vote. Hey, so, hey, um, dude, I mean, that was like the teenage coming-of-age film. I would understand if you're somebody are my, like my age. Yeah, that one time at band camp, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, uh, I, would, I didn't vote for American Pie, but I mean, as someone who doesn't really watch the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I'd be like, oh, okay, who cares? <laughs> yeah there was a there was a commenter who wrote it i think american pie could have taken rocky down wow hmm. i don't know wow. uh Old. rocky didn't make it out of the first round it lost the middle earth franchise um but let's talk about some close ones real quick x-men over die hard that was close 51 to 49 percent mm. uh x-men won and then this is the one that kind of shocked me i thought planet of the apes a 22 seed uh, won over Fast and Furious, which was 11 seed. And it was, again, 51 to 49%. Wow. I never got into the Planet of the Apes franchise. I believe you you saw some of the re- recent ones, Kyle, no, right? Or no? No, Am I, making I, things I up? haven't seen no? really any. Maybe you picked it in a box office draft. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, I think that probably is possible. Yeah. But, yeah, just those Fast and Furious films, they're like billion dollars 
a pop. You know, it just it just makes money, yeah. and that's why I was just like, okay, they're gonna easily make it to through the first round. Yeah. No, but uh, anything that stand out to you guys in the first round just, that either lost that won. I'm just going through. Uh, I mean, just so, I'm just gonna mention some lower seeds that beat. So yeah. Mission Impossible beat Hunger Games. I think as it yeah, should. I think that's what I <laughs> voted for. So I mean. Mm. Um, uh, one I was definitely excited with, and it just really just lucked out with like how the seating worked. Did not plan this. Shrek and Toy Story actually went yeah. up against each other in the first yeah, round. Uh, I was glad to see Toy Story win. It was seventy-two to twenty-eight um, percent. Again, I think say what you will. Shrek one is actually a, a classic, you know, parody of the whole Disney kind of princess fairy tale uh, story. But I mean, Toy Story. I mean, the first one is great. The third one is amazing, and the, and two and four are good films. Yeah. So it's like you don't really have a. I think all those in Rotten Tomatoes are like ninety eight, mm. ninety nine, hundred percent. So, um, one that I'm not surprised uh, lower seed one was Born Identity over Transformers. What I'm surprised by is that Transformers are a twelve seed. Like people are still going money, money, yeah, money. People are still yeah. going to see that. And this is North American box yeah. office too. It isn't the uh, worldwide box yeah, office. That is but... wild to me. Twelfth out of all film franchises, crazy. Now we know why Michael Bay still has a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's see here. Let's go into the next round. Uh, we'll we'll talk about the results of round two. This is where we went from sixteen franchises to eight. And I probably should have mentioned this earlier. If you're having trouble following along on the audio version, we are streaming on Twitch. This video will be on YouTube. That might be an easier way to see how the brackets unfolding, but for whatever reason you're just on audio go to the blog doerdynasty.com and you can see the bracket as we're going through this to kind of see what won and what lost between each one but all right in this round uh we got a couple more uh just blowouts um middle earth over the dc extended universe 87 to 13 percent so justice league didn't get the justice league snyder cut bump only 13 percent compared to the lord of the rings franchise and then uh, Marvel overtook Star Trek 91 to 9%. Wow. Wow. I just think it's two different two different eras. I bet if yeah. we put Marvel up against like Star Trek, like maybe a generation before, it'd be a lot mm. different. Mm. Mustics, I voted Star Trek. Yeah. So. I just think it's a de- 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 generational thing for that, for that one. Even though, you know, J.J. Abrams tried to bring back the Star Trek universe with that whole thing, but... Uh, yeah, J.J. Abrams just is always just trying to bring back stuff. He, you know, he did Mission Impossible 3, mm-hmm. uh, obviously Star Trek, Star Wars. It's, he doesn't do a lot of original stuff anymore, yeah. I feel like. It's just bringing the stuff yeah. back. I'm wondering if, uh, what'd you say, is Mustics in the chat? That said? Yeah, Mustics in the chat, yeah. Because uh, I remember... A, a Trekkie or whatever they call it. Mm. He was really upset by J.J. Abrams doing what he did to Star Trek. He said he was auditioning for Star Wars. It's like Star Trek and Star Wars. Star Trek's supposed <laughs> to be naval battleships yeah. in like space. It's a <laughs> s- slower moving. It's not like beep, 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 like all this fast paced stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> it was expletive. He did both. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, never should have happened. Okay, we, we set music yeah. off. All right, <laughs> let's move in to uh, some... some. I think this is the surprise for me. This was the surprise of the entire bracket for me was the run that Indiana Jones mm. is going on. Indiana Jones took down Spider-Man. Um, Spider-Man is a four seed. Indiana Jones was a 20 seed. Uh, the vote was 58.5 to 41.5%. Um, what do you think about this one, Kyle? Uh, Indiana Jones versus Spider-Man. Well, I mean, I can... I've only seen... This is horrible, but... I've only Uh-oh. seen the first Indiana Jones movie, which is good. I really liked it. Yeah, it's a great one. And line. I could see why it might be beat Spider-Man because in my mind of what I know about Spider-Man is the origin story, three different movies. So <laughs> it's practically the same movie three times. So, I mean, I can understand why Indiana Jones would win. I mean, that I feel like Indiana Jones is just timeless. We talked about the generational thing with Star Trek and 
and Marvel, but Indiana Jones just feels like whoever's seen it has loved it and has kind of always loved it. So I get it. Yeah, I mean, for me, I see pros and cons on both here. I feel like, sure, Spider-Man, they had to redo it so many times, but there's definitely people, I mean, I think the Maguire, Spider-Man 1 and 2, some of the greatest, you know, mm. it started it. The Garfield ones, yeah, we don't need to really talk about them. And then the the Tom Holland Spider-Man, a lot of people yeah. like him. Uh, the first one, Homecoming, I thought was a lot of fun. And the new one, which is rumored to have that whole Spider-Verse kind of thing, which technically Spider-Verse, the animated version, was included in this franchise, which was also great in an Academy Award winning film. So, sure, they have a lot of great ones in there, but the con is they had to reboot it so many times. Indiana Jones, however, first one, classic. Third one, also great. Second one, it really doesn't really hold up pc wise to now and it's also kind of hit or miss as well the fourth one is usually universally criticized online so it's like again it goes back to the whole thought of like man you really hit one home run you got a triple in there and then you struck out mm. it's like but then spider-man it's like well you got spider-man one two homecoming yeah, spider-verse that's true. It's like, that's true i think yeah. i think the weight but, of of the first indiana jones is really what's yeah. driving i think that's what most people think of when they think of indiana jones not mm four not two i think they think of that first one i i and you know from from somebody sitting here voting going through you know they're spending what five minutes looking at this they're not sitting down watching the movies looking up all you know yeah. most people i would assume um are not looking up all the all the what, what's encap encapsulated in the spider verse and and what's encapsulated in, in indiana jones and you know uh gut reaction I, I think that it's that first indiana jones and that that's what's pushing it yeah yeah um Somebody knew the outcome before the round was even over. They commented, Indiana Jones can suck my butt. <laughs> so that was a comment. They knew. They're like, oh, man, they're going to ruin Spider-Man and take him out of the competition. But um, uh, let's see here. Uh, one of the close ones in this one, it was actually kind of sad to see for me. Uh, um, Wizarding, the Wizarding World beat Mission Impossible 55 to 45%. Um I, I think, yeah, again, I think the Harry Potter films, I definitely have a fond place in my heart for them. Not a big fan of the Fantastic Beast films, but man, I really love the Mission Impossible franchise, so I was sad to see that. Any Anything else in the in this in this uh, next round that really, you know, was good, was bad, surprised you? Well, yeah, I think it's just that Indiana Jones. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I, I, here's the thing. I love the X-Men and like their abilities, mm -hmm. I don't like the films, the, uh, a lot of them. The, a lot of them are bad. Yeah. I mean, if we're including Logan in that X-Men like movie, that's a great, yeah. great movie. But um, And there's some, there's like one, one I think one X-Men movie I like, but the rest are just like, why are we doing this to ourselves? Um, so I, you know, I understand it's very popular, but it, it's just interesting to see how popular it is. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll say I was also sad to see Star Wars overtake Toy Story. It was never going to make out of mm -hmm. that of that division. Yeah. It was just have Star Wars in that division. It, w it didn't stand a chance. But that's a pretty stacked yeah. upper part of the bracket there. Yeah, yeah. Rocky, yeah. Lord of the Rings, The Conjuring is, and then you have DC Extended Universe, which is that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Toy Story yeah. and Shrek, two animated powerhouses. Saw, which is whatever. And Star Wars. I mean, yeah. that's a pretty stacked part of that bracket. And I will say, not to give anything away for Indiana Jones, but I mean, outside of Spider-Man, I feel like it wasn't that strong of a lower division mm. here. Sure, there's some good ones in here, but like, you know, if I'm looking through it, okay, Halloween, Pirates of the Caribbean, again, a great first one, not so great other ones, um, X-Men, Transformers. Mm. Yeah. You know, so it's... So it, it, once it beat Spider-Man, it had a pretty good... You're like, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see here. Our next round, uh, we went from eight franchises to four. And there was really no blowouts this time. It was a lot of... The MCU defeated James Bond 67 to 33%. Indiana Jones defeated X-Men 73.5 to 26.5%. So kind of like two-thirds of both of these or three-fourths for the last one. Um, I don't know. I guess this is maybe a surprise. I'm not sure. Uh, Batman uh, defeated the Wizarding World 58 
to 42%. What do you think about the Wizarding World lose, or, yeah, losing to Batman here? Uh, I like the, like, the Nolan Batman movies. Yeah. Um, and I like some of the other Batman movies. But Harry Potter just is so ingrained in my, just from growing up, so I probably would have taken Harry Potter on my end or the wizard wizarding world. Cause the fantastic beasts movies can be thrown in the trash, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a tough one. I, I really do like Batman though. I will say that. So, but it's just, yeah. I don't know. Just yeah, one that, is with my heart, was, I guess. That's kind of where I was, where it was like, I picked wizarding world. Cause again, I, I mentioned it, not a fan of fantastic beasts, but you got solid eight films that have part of my childhood mm-hmm. and stuff. Maybe other generations were more into the Batman thing, but I feel like the Dark Knight, perfect. Boom. Great. I love those films. But like, it's another thing like Spider-Man. Oh, we're going to reboot it every five years. It's um, Michael Keaton. We have Val Kilmer, George Clooney, um, uh, Christian Bale. Okay. Who's the next? Uh, Ben Affleck. It's Mm. just like you're constant. I mean, uh, Robert Pattinson. It's just Mm. like, you know, it's like you didn't do it that time. Now you're doing it again. Oh, now you're doing it again. And, um, how many times does, you know, his parents have to die in the alleyway? It's like, we've seen this. We've seen this. Joker, okay. And it's yeah. just like, but I'll yeah, s- the Dark Knight, perfect trilogy. It's just, for me, I picked Wizarding World because I think it just had, it did it once and it did it yeah. well. So this was, uh, this round, uh, for the most part, was uh, kind of sad for me because a lot of my, the ones that I liked, yeah. you know, kind of went away. Um, I, the, I... I will say the thing I'm most nerd for is the Lord of the Rings. I mean, what Peter yeah. Jackson did with um, how he created that world, I mean, is fantastic. To, it's just uh, that's the thing that I get nerdy for is the Lord of the Rings. So that that seeing that lose kind of stinks. But um, but I mean, losing to Star Wars, what can you do? Yeah, and and I'll say that one was close. That one, Star Wars won over Middle Earth, fifty two. To 48 wow. percent yeah it's that part of the brackets tough man yeah yeah so a couple of votes could have swung it uh the other way um yeah uh there was a comment this is obviously heading towards a mcu versus star wars end here and i'm not so sure about that <laughs> uh, we got our final four and leading to the final two here first john what do you think of the final four um mcu versus indiana jones with star wars versus batman i think it's a a pretty tough matchup excuse me i mean those are 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 movies that that formed my childhood i mean i think the only one i really wasn't really uh, seeing as a kid was was the mcu but i know a lot of people my age were into the comics or you know that 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 didn't that existed you know so it's 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 tough it's really tough and 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 uh, more so for me, I, I think it's tougher that I like a lot of the earlier stuff for all, all all three of the other ones. So it's it's a little harder to judge when there's been a lot that came out since then, you know. So it's ah, oh, it really is a it was a tough choice. Yeah, for for me going into making this and just playing it out in my head, all right, I kind of saw three of the four. Mm. Uh, you know, maybe Wizarding World could have yeah. snuck in over Batman. I, 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 I wasn't seen sure. at least two out of the four. Yeah. But like MCU, Star Wars was making the final yeah. four. And I really thought our final two was going to be MCU versus Star mm. Wars. But that's not the case. Um, we'll break it down here. Um, Star Wars defeated Batman 66 to 34 yeah, percent. Like two thirds. Um, yeah. So a uh, comment was Star Wars is great, but the Dark Knight trilogy 2005 to 2012 beats even the best of the Star Wars films, the originals. Uh, the Force Awakens, The Last Jedi. Um, I would have to agree with that. I would have to agree with that statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's there's talk that at the Oscars they changed their five nominees for Best Picture to an expanded category the year after The Dark Knight was snubbed for, at the Oscars. They're like, we got to open this thing up to get films like The Dark Knight in yeah. here. I mean, it won an Oscar for Heath Ledger. Yeah. It. It's a it's one of my favorite yeah. films, definitely. Yeah. Um, and that, that trilogy was perfect. We talked to Chris Nolan earlier tonight. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and 
Yeah, it's just, yeah, the Star Wars, yeah, the originals, like, I mean, I guess the, the prequels, the prequels, I should say. Yeah, the originals are good. The the, the second trilogy, uh, <laughs> you know, or, or I guess the most recent trilogy. The, those the Four, five, and six, especially four and five, those are great, mm. but all right here. Uh, this is this was the shock of the bracket, I think. The entire bracket was Indiana Jones defeating the MCU. Yeah. I was shocked by this when I saw yeah, this. Yeah, that's wild. That is wild to see. Um, um, it was close. 52.2 wow. versus 47.8%. And wow. how many votes? Uh, I, I would have to go back okay. to the form. I don't have the the actual things with me. I'm, I'm sure it was like, you know, three or four or five votes. I think those could have tied it mm. up, switched it over. I mean, it was, it was very close. Just that's why every vote matters. Um, yeah, I like I... I just I'm glad in a way because it was like oh it's gonna be very predictable like you know oh the final two Marvel versus Star Wars it would have just yeah like everyone saw it like I mean that commenter was like oh the number one seed Marvel's gonna make it to the end mm. but at least you know Marvel's not gonna yep, win no nope. it's not in the not finals gonna happen um one commenter said the MCU is fake <laughs> sure well I As got news for you. all the other <laughs> nominees on this bracket. <laughs> Indiana Jones, not a true story. <laughs> Sorry. Star Wars. Star Wars is actually a history film because it, it's a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So it is a documentary about a different galaxy. Well, but and I mean, guess what? I mean, with how with how many Tiger King movies they're talking about making, <laughs> that could be a part of this list before you know it. Yeah, could be, could be. Um. All right, here. Uh, should we get to it? The final round? Indiana Jones versus Star Wars? Um, while I said the Marvel versus Indiana Jones was the shocker of the bracket, I think it made it, to me personally, not the greatest final round, if that makes sense. Yeah. We had our big surprise in the <laughs> round before <laughs> the finals, so that's, if that makes sense. That's sometimes how it happens. Came too soon. Um, but, uh, John... What do you think? Indiana Jones or Star Wars? If you had to pick, what's your pick? That's really tough. That's really tough because I really like Indiana Jones and I really like that original, you know, four or five, six of Star Wars, but there's just a lot more Star Wars that I, I kind of, I haven't even seen them all. You know, some of those new ones I haven't seen. Um, I think I've seen like episode two and three, maybe once, you know, so that kind of, that kind of detracts from me, but at the same time, Crystal Skull was pretty bad, <laughs> you yeah. know. So I, I, oh, I, I don't know. I, I think if I was gonna sit down and either watch four or Indiana Jones, I would probably go for Indiana Jones, just because I think I've mm. seen four recently, more recently. Mm. Yeah, Star Wars four. You know. Yeah, I'm trying to think. For me, again, yeah, it's like uh, I feel like Star Wars has some, yeah home runs. You know, with episodes four and five, and Last Jedi, and so. But like, man, there's some strikeouts in there and there's some other slog you got to get through. But I feel like as a whole, if I just want to sit down and have some fun, the four movies of Indiana Jones are stronger as a collective, I feel like, than the the 12 films or whatever of the Star Wars franchise. Am I, am I crazy, Kyle? I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen all of Indiana Jones, so I, I can't say. Mm. But just for me, mm. on a personal level, I would much rather watch... I mean, if I'm comparing the best Indiana Jones movie with Star Wars, I'm going to watch Star Wars. I just, uh, that fits my vibe a little bit more. And not saying Indiana Jones isn't great, but more casually, just want to watch Star Wars more. Um, so that's what I would go with. All right. Well, let's reveal the winner. All right. The vote with 68.8 versus 31.3%. The winner of our favorite film franchise March Madness bracket is Star Wars. <laughs> Who could have Surprise, thought? surprise. Who could have thought? Uh, I just realized, it's actually interesting, Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford, and Han Solo, Star yeah, Wars. He's in both. It was the two Harrison Ford franchises. Yeah. Nice work. Yeah. Nice work. Um, is this a surprise, Kyle? Uh... 
I was going to make a bad Harrison Ford joke. Oh, great. I was going to say he's so excited he'll probably drive his plane into the ground or whatever he does again. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know. Where's the punchline on that? I don't know. <laughs> the... um, okay. It was uh, Sorry, what was the question again? I was too busy thinking about my joke. <laughs> Pretty much, is this a surprise? Star Wars over Indiana no, Jones winning no, 68.8%. I, I mean, it's not a surprise to me. I, I mean, I wouldn't have even thought twice about it, but... You thought as collective, Indiana Jones is better. So, I don't know. To me, well, it's a no I'd say hesitation. as like a film, personally, I would rather watch, I think, the F- Indiana Jones films. But I could easily see Star Wars has the bigger cultural impact yeah. than Indiana Jones. But still, I mean, yeah, cultural impact, sure. But, I mean, Indiana Jones still has the thing. Does, don't they have the gun thing and the, the whip thing? Mm. That's still like a cultural mm. relevant. <laughs> the gun thing and the whip thing. Uh um, U6 brings up in the chat, Star Wars also has some positive recency bias yeah. with Mando. Um, yeah, that it's a film franchise bracket, but it's hard to like differentiate. Oh, yeah, the Mandalorian was just on uh, Baby Yoda and all that. Honestly, but it's been a while since Indiana Jones, and we are going to get an Indiana Jones 5, but it's going to be a little bit. Honestly, I wasn't even thinking about Mandalorian because I haven't even watched that yet. So, mm. yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll run through some of these comments. Uh, Indiana Jones is better overall, but Star Wars has more of an impact. And I've watched all the films. Uh, somebody said, Jones, man, bad. No pillaging <laughs> artifacts. Naughty. Don't make me smack. Uh, and they said, if there was no Disney Star Wars, I would have rated it above Indiana Jones, but Disney sucks. <laughs> well, I have news for you, too. Indiana Jones is actually owned by Disney as well. So <laughs> Disney owns everything, man. They stink. They just yeah, stink. So, uh, and then there was a random comment. Middle Earth will prevail. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that was you, yeah, Kyle. I, I don't know if that was. Um, but I could tell you who it wasn't. It was definitely not Mark. Uh, Mar- our friend Mark from The Good, Bad, and Watchable. Uh, it wasn't his comment because he actually sent his bracket every week to our Twitter feed. And it was kind of cool to see where his mind was going uh-huh. uh, with the franchises here. And he actually had Rocky beat Middle Earth in round one. He's a big Rocky guy, I mean, it looks it, like. Yeah. And he had Rocky defeating Star Wars and making it to the final <laughs> four alongside the MCU, Die Hard, and Batman. That was his final <laughs> four. This is, yeah, this is Mark's bracket, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rocky, MCU, Die Hard, and Batman. And then it was Batman versus the MCU in the final two. Okay. I don't know who he had as a winner. He didn't, ever, he didn't send that one yet, but... There are no winners. Yeah, yeah so... All right. Uh, any final thoughts on the March Madness bracket? Was it a success, you think? Should we move to TV next year? Is, I think it was fun. I, th- I mean, I think it was yeah. good. I, it was inevitably with these brackets, they're favorites for a reason, you know. Yeah. So, But it was interesting. There were some surprises. Uh, I think there were more surprises than I think yeah. not. So, yeah, at least for, for, yeah, as I- the rankings go. Yeah, I think so, too, because, I mean, going in, it's like I was so worried when I was going to do this, and that's almost one of the reasons why I wanted to do trilogies instead because I was just worried, well, is Marvel just going to win? Uh-huh. If Marvel's going to win, then what's the point of doing mm. this? And and I was, you know, I was like, well, maybe we can look at the other matchups and see which one actually, oh, this film beat this one, mm. and we could talk about the individual matchups instead of the overall picture. But then, you know, uh, Marvel didn't make it to the finals, yeah. so it was kind of, it was exciting towards the end. But, um, yeah, I'll... I, I love these brackets. Yeah, I love fun. when we can get the, the 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 listeners to vote and interact and have fun with it as well. And um, let's see, next week we have another big show as well. And I mentioned the good, bad, and watchable. Uh, and we're gonna have them on. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, they will be joining us again for our annual prediction podcast, where we will predict the 93rd Academy Awards. This year is gonna be bonkers. I have. Uh, <laughs> We, we have a good streak so far, Kyle. I think we're like 3-0. and I think we're, mm-hmm. you know, doing well. But this yeah, year, we it lost. could go any which way. <laughs> Trying to put it modestly. I think we have uh, never lost ever. <laughs> well, I don't want to, you know, knock on, I don't want to, like, jinx us here. But, uh, yeah, so we'll have them on. Uh, that's going to be Tuesday night. We'll be back to Tuesdays next week. Tuesday at 8 p.m. That's the plan. But if anything changes... Check our Twitter, Twitter at Dual Redundancy. We'll let you know the schedule for sure. Uh, but if you want more film franchises and you want a little preview of the good, bad, and watchable, 
you can actually check out last year's uh, podcast we did, episode 304, our favorite summer blockbuster special. Uh, we had those guys on. We talked about our favorite blockbusters, so it kind of fits in with the franchises and, and having them on. So and you can check that out if you like tonight's episode. But you can find episodes of the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, the blog, doordonsey.com. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Do or Done and See. And of course, make sure you're ready. Subscribe to Twitch, twitch.tv slash Do or Done and See. Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. is our usual time to go live. I got to thank both you guys. I had a lot of images this week for John to do, and I'm going to have even more technical challenges next week. And for both you guys for just joining me and just doing this bracket nonsense. Couldn't do it without you guys. Yeah, dude. <laughs> All right. Until next time, I'm David Allen. I'm John Berwick. And I'm Cobberger. And that's all we got for Doer Duncy. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>